वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ श्री कृष्णा कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेस एंड रिसर्च पाराशाला एंड वी आर इन द लेक्चर कंटिन्यूइंग विद आइसोलेशन and the characterization that is extraction isolation or separation and then characterization chapter in for the fifth semester b farm students in which uh, we have completed the chromatographic technique for various isolation techniques and now we are just coming into the characterization structural elucidation which can be done by means of various spectroscopic methods so they have given many there are many spectroscopic method we cannot cover in this uh, completely detail about their instrumentation and their basic uh, uh, operation and all but still to so, some extent what is its application can be done for this uh, herbal formulations and herbs and in pharmacognosy and phytochemistry too for the fifth semester we will just try to today we can see at least two instruments of uv spectroscopy and the calorimetry also comes in this spectroscopy method and then uh, the ir spectroscopy and we have to go for nmr and mas and there are emission spectroscopies are there fluorimetry is there all that we cannot cover but at least four instruments we can just go for it and then electrophoresis and uh, uh, dna uh, in fingerprinting these all are some of the technique which is having influence for our various analysis of herbs and herbal drug formulations so that's why i have taken in a small manner because uv spectroscopy already if you want to see an analysis uh, uh, subject i have explained about how they will do the structural elucidation by means of double bond conjugate double bond systems and uh, open chain and uh, ring structures and how the nanometer bathochromic shift and uh, exochromic shift what is oxochrome these are all things i have explained in various other subject videos which the students are interested means you can just go for that details also and uh, if there is any doubt and it will be little more more advanced it may be useful for the pg students but here for our sake i have taken very little portion which is uh, related to the herbal formulation and the herbal uh, herbs extraction and uh, how to uh, characterization i have just given application not much go in the uh, uh, principal part and basic theoretical part i have not included here in this pharmacognosy and phytochemistry too so today we will just go through about the uv spectroscopy in which it is necessary for us to know about uh, uh, especially uh, we should know about uv spectroscopy means uh, uh, what is the uh, main spectroscopy means it's about light uh, light means we should know about some of the basic things which we studied in the small classes students just revise is so when a light falls that is monochromatic light falls monochromatic light means how will you make monochromatic almost the sunlight we can comes from polychromatic light we can make convert into monochromatic light by means of monochromatic filters can be used and uh, prisms can be used grating can be used these all the some of the monochromatic which we might have studied but any of nowadays all the instrument will have grating diffraction grating which has the small grooves they have the polychromatic light can be converted into monochromatic light according to the band width which they require can be adjusted by the instrument even digital and computerized instruments are now available almost the previously the cystronics was not computerized it was digital but now we can see in computerized and we can have scanning facilities and also baseline facilities how we can do for uv spectroscopy analysis for any type of drugs for dilutions only we have to make by the personal work and in that we can see we are dealing with what is spectrophotometry what is calorimetry and what is the nanometers what is the light wave 
how the absorption of the light can be determined i am not going to the theory about beer lambert's law all these things comes in your analytical chemistry you might have studied or you might be given explanation for the chemistry teacher but still i am going for the advanced application directly and as well as i will just touch the instrumentation slightly for your reference and calorimetry there is colored substances calorimetry and it is a visible rad radiation range you should know light wave it's measured here by means of nanometer and then you can see what is lambda also you should be some of the uh, see some of the things are white in color some of the things are black in color some of the things are blue in color we know that why it is black in color because it absorbs almost all the color from the white color it reflects all the color we know there are only seven colors which are visible the radiation which is visible radiation is from 400 to 800 nanometer or 400 to 700 nanometer in fact it is the nanometers which we can decide we can visible light radiation so visible light radiation nanometer it is determined by means of nanometer so calorimetry is concerned with the determination of substance by measuring of relative absorption of the light with respect to the known concentration of the substance so the color suppose if it is a, if it is in yellow in color then we can see the maximum absorption of yellow yellow color is reflected the opposite so there is one symbol in certain books if you go for beckett and stenlack or if you go for any type of um, a, a modern method of analysis books for uv spectroscopy or calorimetry if you want to read then so that they might have given the opposite vgr can be written and so that we can find out in opposite color can be see selected as an as a as a filter and also the light which can be maximum absorbed by the solution which you prepare so that is what we can see absorption of the light not reflected of the light so we know that when a light falls on an object when light falls on an organic molecule or organic solution which you see you can see some light will be absorbed some light will be transmitted some light will be reflected and this is the thing which happens so we are going to identify the absorbed light the absorbed light can be determined or can be identified or can be can be measured by the instrument by means of calculating what amount of yeah, transmitted light by means of calculating so we have some theories which we have studied beer lambert's law that is like uh, for example lambert's law states that the thickness of the medium is directly proportional to the reduction of the transition of the trans transmitted light that means the thickness increases means the transmitted light will be decreases so thickness decreases means the transmitted light will be increased and the same thing even concentration in beer lab beer's law also states that according to the directly proportional to the for a concentration inversely proportional to the concentration of the transmitted light if the transmitted concentration is high the transmitted light will decrease so if the tra tra concentration is low then automatically the transmitted light will increase so that is why the beer lambert's law that is which we have proved by means of epsilon is equal to uh, absorption versus and also the concentration that is that formula which you might have studied and you might be going to read with the beer lambert's law so this is a visible calorimeter visual calorimeter which can be seen that vgr that is natural or artificial white light is generally used as a light source light source for the visible light is a tungsten filament or a light source which is determined and usually made uh, uh, even mercury lamp with a with a simple instrument termed as calorimeter which gives the colored source and which can fall on the object and we can find out object how much it is absorbed the transmitted light can be calculated by means of a photoelectric cell this photoelectric cell is the photons which is coming out of the object or out of the cell can be also there will be lot of anodes which can be used to collect and the anodes will be transmitted to the cathode and the amount of photons collected by the anodes can be transmitted to the cathode and also we can immediately measure the amount of a uh, light which is for which is uh, falls on the photoelectric cell can be used so this is instead of i we can replace the photoelectric cell and the instrument can be called photoelectric calorimeter so a source of calorimeter is a source like a, now for a plain light which can made to fall on an object and another side we can keep a detector of photo tube and also which can detect what is the transmitted light is emitted and how much light is absorbed can be easily determined by means of the formula and that instrument is says that photoelectric calorimeter so students have to be very clear you, you, whether i am fast or slow 
it is nearly you can see very clearly in the name itself you can remember photo electric calorimeter photo electric calorimeter the photo electric calorimeter means photometer which is used for detecting the photons which is emitted from the light through the substance which is kept for the determination and calorie why it is a calorimeter because white light which is in the calorimeter range of 400 to 700 nanometer which can be the visible radiation of light which is emitted from the tungsten filament or the mercury filament which can be used for the source of light which can made to fall on the object. How far you have understood I don't know it is a very simple subject and also very interesting subject which can be interested to know about this visible and UV spectroscopy. I have given in another uh, explanation about even what are the bands which is available, what is the chemical band, chemical bonds, how the requirements for the absorption of UV light and all everything I have given. So if possible Fisher's wood walls rules also I have expected to read for the students in their future to go for the reference I have given some lecture in my channel of Big Pharma. So in UV spectrophotometric analysis, a source of radiation is used that extend in the ultraviolet region of the spectrum. From this a definite wavelength of radiation are chosen possessing a bandwidth of less than 1 nanometer. The instrument employed for this purpose is called the UV spectrophotometer. The UV when you are using a nanometer below 400 to 100 or even 0 the nanometer which cannot be visible it is UV radiation. UV spectrophotometer is a combined of UV spectrophotometer and a photometer. UV spectrometer with a diffraction grating which can emit a light the more polychromatic light and the monochromatic light from a radiation of the 400 to 400 or 1 to 400 the lower the range of UV radiation and the detector can be used by photo multiplier or photo tube photometer can be act used after the instrument after the sample or a standard where the light falls and it can be detected so it is an UV spectrophotometer hence the spectrometer is an optical instrument spectrometer means optical whether you are using visible radiation then you can say calorimeter if you are using an um, UV radiation of a spectro uh, instrument for the light to be fall on the object then it is called UV spectrophotometer otherwise it is called calor calorifotometer. So spectrophotometer is an optical instrument which possesses an optical system which produces dispersion of incident electromagnetic radiation which I was telling about the polychromatic light converted into monochromatic light using a prism or diffraction grating or a filter which can be used for visible radiation a selected wavelength of a spectral range. So photometer is a device of measuring intensity of the transmitted radiation. The spectrophotometer is a combination to give the signal of difference in the transmitted radiation of reference material and a sample at a selected wavelength. So it will be interesting for you to know what is the definition of a spectrophotometer and what is mean by the calorie spectrophotometer. So calorie, calorie spectrophotometer or spectrophotometer or calorie photo calorimeter these all things so spectrum the spectrum source which have been uh, made to fall on the object or the sample or the reference if it is a, if it is a, if it is a uh, for example single uh, cell devices are there double beam device single beam devices are there the beam can be split into double beam is costly which nowadays almost all the instruments are available in double beam previously single beam so sample and the standard and the blank will be kept individually but Nowadays the sample and the standard and the blank and the standard and the blank and the sample can be kept directly. It can be compared and you can get the reading immediately by the double beam spectroscopy. So anyhow double beam or single beam you should know that what is the spectrophotometer and what is photometer. Spectrometer is an optical device and photometer which is a detecting device of the transmitted light by means of the photons which can be collected by the Anodes which is kept in the cathode can be detected the complete reading of the amount of electricity can be converted into the substance concentration. The spectrophotometer is combined to give the signal 
of the different in the transmitted radiation of a re reference material and is sampled at a selected wavelength. So UV spectroscopy plays a very important role for the identity of the plant constituents. This may be either in the screening of the crude extract or observation of the eluent of chromatographic column during separation of the product, plant products. Generally, the UV spectroscopy of the phytoconstituents should be measured in dilute solution using an appropriate blank. The absorbance of the colored component can be measured in between 400 to 700 nanometer while the colorless compound can be measured between 200 to 400. I told 0 to 400. Usually 200 to 400 will be the UV radiation can be measured. The particular wavelength at which the maximum and minimum absorption takes place should be recorded. A pure phytoconstituents which shows the characteristic of UV spectra should be purified repeatedly from the mixture until the particular characteristic spectra will obtain with the help of UV visible spectra. Sometimes we can use predict the structure of phytoconstituents like carotenoids have generally three small absorption peak in 400 to 500 nanometer. Why? Because carotenoids, it depends upon the vitamin A. You can see the structure of vitamin A that is conjugated double bond systems started from the first ring structure. If you go for the structure, I am just remembering which I studied in my class. That is the ring structure with a, a chain like that carotenoids. When you break into two, vitamin A, vitamin A1, A2, these all things when you are studying in detail, we should know that how many double bond system, conjugate double bond system, which can exist in the system to absorb the UV radiation. So there will be peaks are available up to 400 to even 500 nanometer even visible radiation also it is possible in carotenoids. And if the single peak persists in 250 to 260 nanometer of phytoconstituents may be a purine aromatic amino acid phenol or pyridine or poly acetyl unsaturated compound. See, which we have mentioned that is an unsaturated compound, pyridine, a structure of benzene ring structure, which is having a conjugate double bond system, even pyridine, even phenolic compound, which is amino acids, aromatic amino acid, like you can see uh, uh, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, they all of them have a conjugate double bond system, which can have an absorption of the light in between 250 to 260 nanometer. And uh, hydroxyl group or cinnamyl aldehyde, aromatic compound or a ketone group which also have shows the characteristic of UV absorption pattern. When you go for UV study very clearly due to presence of carbonyl group, double bond O or, or, or oxygen group, there is oxochrome, chromophore. These all things are the basic requirements for UV absorption, light absorption that when you are going in detail about the analytical chemistry of UV spectroscopy theoretical, you can see in the other classes which I have lectured regarding specifically UV spectroscopy and its uh, theoretical uh, observation and calculations also I have given in the other session of analytical chemistry. If possible, you can just refer to that lecture also. In British Pharmacopoeia, that is the British Pharmacopoeia give the identification test of various phytoconstituents based on their UV absorption. Characteristics like uh, lanos, that is for example, lanotoside C, benzyl penicillin and various alkaloids like morphine, cocaine, resulpine, tubocurarin and the chloride, colchicin, these all are some of the alkaloids which you can see of study in UV spectroscopy. And it has also useful for quantitative evaluation, quantitative evaluation of phytoconstituents. For the first the standard curve, the standard curve preparation, various different concentration in the 2, two microgram per ml, 3 microgram per ml, 4 microgram or 5 microgram per ml, 10 microgram per ml, 15 microgram ml, 20 microgram ml preparation of the standard curve can be prepared and an unknown solution can be found out what is its absorption and it can be extrapolated and you can find out the concentration of the solution which you have, which you have prepared. So that is also the method which use a graphical method of extrapolating the unknown sample can also be by preparing a standard curve, standard solution 
and absorption and it can be also done and also finding out the lambda max the maximum absorption of a solution which you prepare the lambda max can be scanned and it can be identified after finding the lambda max the maximum absorption of the solution which you are going to analyze have to be determined and then you can go for performing the uv spectroscopy for the determination of the quantitative estimations and for the first thing the standard curve is prepared by using the standard substance and then by the curve of concentration the unknown compound are determined that is only one line i have given but it is a big experiment which can be performed even in the laboratory understand so you can see this is the structure or this is the schematic diagram you just observe the schematic diagram this will give you i will give you some explanation about the instrumentation i am not going in detail but still you can see the source for example this is uv spectroscopy you can give that is, and also you can have visible so there is tungsten lamp as well as deuterium lamp deuterium lamp will give the light radiation from 400 to 200 nanometer or 200 to 400 nanometer while tungsten filament can give from 400 to 700 nanometer or 800 nanometer so these two one is visible radiation source that is tungsten and it deuterium both of them i have kept there and this is present in the even instrument and then it enters into the a slit or you can see there is a, a slit or you can see that is called a grating monochromatum so where a grating can be used for this both the lights to give the particular wavelength and also a filter wheel is also present suppose if you want to have a visible radiation of 400 nanometer 500 nanometer 550 or 650 or 750 like that if you want to have a various filters of blue yellow orange and red and the black and the blue these all things can be done by means of filter wheel is also selection of this particular mono monochromatic light can be sent to the chopper which is shown in the picture and after the chopper you can see there is a converting mirror and just enters into the reference and the sample in the same time so what is the meaning of this type of instrument this is of double beam spectroscopy double beam ultraviolet visible spectroscopy meter the name of the instrument and schematic diagram which is shown here is a double beam ultraviolet and the visible spectroscopy that means is we have both visible radiation and you and uv radiation can be determined in this instrument but in the same time it is a double beam so a sample and a reference can be determined in the same by means of detector and amplifier a computer can easily compare and also the concentration or the the component can be easily identified so this is a very good instrument which you can see there is a double beam spectrophotometer after the selection of the um, um, the monochromator using their um, uh, grating it is converted it is enters into the sample cell and that is as you know usually 1 cm cell and there are little more higher cell or usually the 1 cm cell will be used and then uh, the reference both of them will be come to the detector which is usually a detector is photo multiplier tube and then amplification and then computerized and you can find out and determine the concentration so that i just gave the, the explanation and also which we can give more detail about what type of uh, materials can be used what type of cells can be used what type of detectors can be used what type of monochromators can be used all these things details can be it is necessary for the students to know in your analytical chemistry different phyto constituents which are which can be with their wavelength which i have seen which i have given for example like ultraviolet radiation if we want to absorption of concentration uh, for reserve point 268 nanometer is the lambda max and uh, lambda max the maximum absorption so that lambda max can be fixed for observe uh, finding out for reserve point wind crystal wind blast in morphine and here why i told the wind crystal and wind blast in morphine especially it has both uv radiation as well as calorimetric radiation 442 in visible radiation also it is possible because it has some color which is easily persisting for some time to which is morphine can be determined by means of 442 nanometer a reserve pine even reserve pine is having uv radiation absorption because they have conjugated double bond system in the same time they have a colored reagent also so 390 nanometer can also be used in visible radiation very very slightly colored substance of reserve pine and also even in the uv radiation 268 it is having a peak and androquine glycosides you can see in 500 nanometer a colored substance 
So this is what about I have made it very very short for the UV spectroscopy radiation for this to this substance this subject but it is a big chapter which has to be referred by the student in detail for for you to have a knowledge and when you go for IR spectroscopy infrared this is also a light spectroscopy this is the two things which we are going to discuss about today infrared spectroscopy infrared spectroscopy means immediately like UV spectroscopy calorimetry which are used for absorption of the light and also finding out the concentration of the substance or to elucidation of the how many double bonds, how many conjugate double bond system can be characterized for a structure when you are isolating and then characterization. What you are going to do IR spectroscopy, this IR spectroscopy when a light falls on the IR spectroscopy. For example, when a light falls, when a light falls, monochromatic light according to the wavelength falls on an object, the molecule will get excited. And it comes to the ground state. That is the main system which is happening. Even UV light also it will get the molecule. The organic molecule will get excited. And it goes to the quantum. It will get, get, get excited and it comes to the ground state. And it will emit light. That is fluorescence, phosphorescence. This all takes place. Some of them they will lose the energy by absorption of the light. And they will lose the energy when they come to the ground state. In IR spectroscopy, there is vibrational energy, rotational energy, electronic energy. So here the vibrational energy and the, and the rotational energy will play a major role in the, in the IR spectroscopy. And it can detect, especially this IR radiation. This IR radiation is very powerful radiation which can be fall on the organic molecules. And it makes the bending and stretching of the bond system and it can be identified for using the functional group of the compound. So what is this functional group? That is whether it is contain OH group, NH group or CH double bond. The bonding system, the bonding, the pi valent bond or covalent bond system, how they are bond bend angle, these all things you might have studied in your chemistry. This angle of bond that is twisting and the scissoring, this all takes place bending these all takes place with vibrational energy and the rotational energy will take place and this will tell about the bond of the O, C or C, C bond, C, N bond, N, H2 bond or C, O, H bond. These all bond, it can be and a functional group can be identified by this IR spectroscopy. So first what do you mean by IR, IR region? This is also light radiation which is an electromagnetic radiation can be divided into three sections. Because this is a measurement not made by the nanometer but we are making into micron and we are making into centimeter inverse as the graph comes to the opposite direction for the absorption of the light. So the near uh, infrared radiation overtone reagent, it is called overtone region where 0 0.822 micro, micron, mu and micron and it can be measured by means of 12,500 to 5,000 centimeter inverse. So middle infrared it's a vibrational rotational region. Here that is overtone region then vibrational and rotational region you can see 2 to 15 micron here 5000 to 666.6 .6 centimeter inverse. The maximum this is the place where the middle infrared region is the place where rotational and the vibrational energy which can give the details about the bond angle of stretching and bending of this this action can be easily identified the functional group can be seen in the 2 to 15 micron that is 5000 to 666.66 centimeter inverse and far infrared range in that is 15 to 1000 micron that is 666.66 into 10 centimeter inverse that is the far infrared region the wavelength usually in centimeter inverse is 104 by lambda in microns and we know that 1 micron is equal to 10 to the power of minus 4 centimeter and the main region of interest in analytical purpose is 2 to as I told just now 2 to 2, 15 micron that is the middle infrared region micron that is 4000 to 400 wave number wave centimeter inverse infrared spectra originate from the different mode of vibration and rotation of the molecule. So this is the thing by the molecular vibration can done by in, as I told stretching and bending of the bond angle in any chemical structure. The stretching vibration is a rhythmic movement along with the bond axis such that the intra atomic 
distance is increasing or decreasing. The bending vibration may consist of a change of the bond angle between the bonds of any structure, chemical structure, which a common atom or a movement of the group of atoms with respect to the re, uh, uh, reminder of the molecule without movement of the atom in the group with respect to one another. So you can see CC or OH C or H2O that means HOO or carbon dioxide C O O there is two O like that if you know that there is a bond angle will be there. So you should study in detail when you come to IR spectroscopy. Example twisting, rocking and tor that is torsioning, torsional vibration, twisting the bond mingling and involved in the change of bond angle. Some of the example of IR absorption bands which I have given directly I have given the band that is CH. This gives a stretching vibration of 3400 centimeter inverse and CD that is deuterium also gives and uh, here the stretching vibration is at heavier that is deuterium is little heavier and you can see CC, CO and CN you can see that is uh, here I did not uh, you are unable to see clearly because it is leading deuterium means what is the nanometer it should come and it should be showing here so you can see here and uh, this uh, sorry here you can see uh, the rhythmic of for example you see the deuterium and here the stretching will be lower frequency due to the heaviness of the deuterium and the CC and the CO, CN, these are occurs in 1300 to 1400 nanometer. For example, any it's a ketone, aldehyde, these all comes in 1500, 1550 nanometer, centimeter inverse and the NO also comes in this centimeter inverse. There is a graphical observation like nanometer which we are telling in the UV spectroscopy, the centimeter inverse, the measurement or the unit for the IR spectroscopy, IR radiation. So, triple bond CN and triple bond CC will also occur in 2300 centimeter inverse to 2000 centimeter inverse. H, fluorine is 400 and 138 centimeter inverse high frequency which is you are using as an uh, reagent or uh, using as a reagent for using absorption of uh, because we should not absorb the length will be more than more than 4000 or less than 4000 if you are using as a solvent system it may not affect the experiment. So fluorine is a high electromagnetic dipole movement and high and so the force of contraction is more. So these contain high frequency of absorption of IR spectroscopy. HO that is ROH Hydrogen bonding decreases the stretching of the bond and increases the bending frequency of IR absorption. This is just an instrument instrument diagram which I have given for an uh, it's a complicated but it is very easy to remember. Only the difference is same like a source is same uh, which we are using not the IR light we have to use and it should be gay, it, it, it should be a mirror whichever you are using uh, mirrors whichever you are used should not absorb the IR radiation and diffraction grating is used and the light source whichever it will be fall on the diffraction grating and then prisms can be used and collimating lens which can also enter into this structure and where the detector is kept and from the detector because usually the detector will come in the last state uh, after the sample but here you can see the detector will come in the initial stage while the light of radiation falls on it and then it goes into the filters and enters into the attenuator where the sample of the comb and as well as the standard is kept where and then it will the, and then where the source directly falls on the object you can see the source of the light of IR radiation IR rays IR rays you can see it is not possible for tungsten filament or by means of mercury lamp or by means of it is not possible. So it is only possible by means of the Bole, um, uh, the special coil which can reduce, produce the IR radiation which is high powerful radiation which can be produced by various uh, filament 
which is specially made for IR radiation should be used in this junction. And this is the schematic diagram just for a reference I have added. And the glass and the quartz we cannot use in this instrument because they have to, they will be strongly absorb the IR radiation and uh, region of photo multiplier tube is in, in, insensitive to the radiation. And uh, so when in, 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 in front surface mirror and uh, um, uh, largely employed to avoid the necessity of the radiation passing through the glass, quartz layer as refraction uh, from uh, metallic surface is generally very efficient in infrared region. So this is what uh, um, in uh, are in insensitive to the radiation. So we can use this quartz uh, uh, can be used instead of glass and uh, they will not absorb. And this is a graph which we, we have shown and uh, uh, especially I told now just now it is said that glass uh, glass is uh, glass and quartz absorb strongly in the uh, infrared region and the uh, photo multiplier tubes are insensitive to the radiation but quartz uh, for example uh, this uh, surface mirror they can be used for reflection radiation passing through a glass or a quartz layer as a reflecting a metallic surfaces is generally very efficient in infrared region instead of this gas and uh, quartz and you can see this is an example graph which is I have shown that is especially it is upside down. Anyone should know about the graph. This is the peak which will be available after the computer when you attached on the uh, or the did or the instrument which is connected with the IR spectroscopy. You will get the peak in the lower region. You can see the peak. There is OH stretching is coming in the 3,300 centimeter inverse, and there is a 1,650. There is a peak which shows that. CC double bond system and also 1500 nanometer which can go over OH stretching and there is two 990 centimeter also you can get but there is 9920 is due to the CC double bond which can be conjugate double bond system which is present in the benzene. This is only for but benzene cannot be shown here because this is a graph which is an example for allyl alcohol. So allyl alcohol means a conjugated double bond system will be there and so that Ready, that is a CC double bond and OH is alcohol so OH is also seen here this type of graphs will show the functional group whatever present in the structure application of IR spectroscopy identification of the functional group of any structure this is called the characterization after isolation of the compound so this chapter says that extraction isolation and characterization this is the characterization so after isolation after a separation we are going to identify the compound First, how many double bonds are there? Then we are finding out the only functional group by means of IR spectroscopy, it is possible. The identification of the functional group and the structural elucidation, the entire IR region is, is, is a group of region that is 400 to uh, 400 centimeter inverse to 1500 centimeter inverse. Fingerprint region 1500 to 400 centimeter inverse which is said to be fingerprint why because it shows the full structure of a benzene structure of the compound and it is a specific structure of the compound that is the group of frequency re uh, reagent region the peak corresponding to different functional group can be observed like amino group and alcohol group etc. In the fingerprint, what do you mean the fingerprint region? Fingerprint region may skeletal vibration, skeletal vibration which are typical of a benzene means a typical skeletal vibration of the molecule of 750 or 800 centimeter inverse. The molecule as a whole, the structural peaks are absorbed. That is the fingerprint region and hence the region of IR spectroscopy is called fingerprint region of a molecule. So, the, the identity, identification of the drug substances can be done by IR spectroscopy. IR spectroscopy of the sample and the standard can be compared to identify a substance. If the spectra are the same, then the identity of the sample can be confirmed. So, that is also can be done by means of comparing with the standard substance in IR spectroscopy. This technique is called spectral matching. And identity, the impurity, identifying the impurity of the substance of the sample also can be done. The impurities can have different chemical structure when compared to the pure drug. Hence, the, these impurities give rise in additional peaks in the centimeter inverse as shown in the previous example of the peak that is, a imp, that is of, the, of the pure drug. 
the additional peaks will be there. Then by comparing this, we can identify the presence of impurity. And study of hydrogen bonding is can be done whether it is an intermolecular or intramolecular, uh, whether it is intermolecular hydrogen, whether it is in the ring structure or it is intramolecular structure can also be hydrogen bonding can be studied. Study of polymers can be done, ratio of uh, cis and trans isomers of mixture of compounds can be done, even quantitative analysis can also be done in the IR spectroscopy. The quantity of the substance can be determined either a pure form or a mixture of two or more component. In this, the peak which is characterized for the drug is chosen and a comparison of the area of the peak for standard and the sample is done. And this method is called baseline technique and is thus used to determine the quantity of the substance. So, you see what an interesting uh, subject and I have not gone for much detail about the instrumentation. That because it is not an instrument subject, it is just an application how IR spectroscopy is applied in plant isolation and characterization of the compound. So I feel this is this is just an idea which is given, but the students should know what is the difference between IR spectroscopy, UV spectroscopy and next year from mass spectroscopy and the NMR spectroscopy which we are going to discuss in the next class. Mass spectroscopy we will see in the next class. Thank you. Thank you students. Have a good day.